Hello everyone and welcome back to Jampuji Jams, the only podcast dedicated to Jampuji heroes. That's right, spelled the same, said differently. I think I remembered the intro for this time, right Zen? That's that's pretty close, I think. Pretty close. If that's not it, it's very close to it. Damn right. We're doing it big this time. We're here to talk about so many things. We missed a lot because we were so busy. I was busy with work, and every time we tried to work, it just didn't work out. So we have a lot of stuff to catch up and talk about, actually, since the last time we talked. So since then, they've started the 3.5 year anniversary. Um, so I wanted to at least say, how are you feeling about this specific anniversary so far? It feels a little bit weird. Uh... It just me. feels like there's not that much going on. Yeah, and like th- there's like one event to do. You can finish it in a day, mm-hmm. and then you wait for the next one to come. Yeah, so it's definitely a little bit weirdly offsided. Um, according to OCHD, they said on the live stream that the trans new transforming mechanic, which is what we'll talk about a little bit later when we get to Asta, um took a lot of time for them to develop so they feel like they had a lot of things planned but they cut them in order to make it in time for some stuff um if that's the case it does really explain a lot of the weirdness around this event in general oh right because the transforming units were so hard to make Yeah. yeah there was like something about them that was just like difficult for them to actually implement and do all that other stuff so that might be one of the reasons. Not to say it excuses it, it at least explains it. Because um, at the end of the day, if something is kind of like funky, then it's really on the dev's fault. And it's like, I can understand to a certain point that this was hard to do, but you could have at least given us a little bit more freebies. Like the fact that the free SSR tickets that we get, the ones that give us a free old limited, once you hit 40, you don't reset back to 20 and 40 again. I feel like yeah, it's a which bit, like, sucks. It really sucks. It really makes those tickets kind of worthless. Yeah, after a while, they're just like, "Here's your three stars." Yeah, so not not the greatest. Um, so, and again, the theme of it also would explain what like the theme of it, which is supposed to be legendary. And I feel like this is something OCHD just said as as well, and I feel like I kind of agree with them. Is that um. It feels like they saw that they were releasing Roger and then just gave up. (laughs) They were like, that's good enough. Yep. Uh, I mean, it because they knew what do they have to do other than that? Yeah. And to be fair, Roger did, in fact, blow things up for them based off of all many times we've gone in like a second. Thank you for all this. Here you go. Here's some we've gotten like for reaching the think what is it top grossing and twitter things they've been giving us rupees to just be like oh shit let's go and i was like oh yeah this is something to celebrate and i was like damn i didn't know it was that like imagine if the celebration was better you guys probably would have made it to first <laughs> <laughs> i know right if it didn't suck so much yeah if it wasn't just literally being carried by the hype of one man <laughs> with roger yeah it's a little bit it's a it's a misstep for sure but i'm hoping that stuff in the I mean it makes sense it. like I, I do like the transforming units so I'm glad yeah. they took the time to do it but and I think that's something that's going to be really cool in the future as well yeah when it expands a little bit more mm-hmm. so it might be worth it just to for the 3.5 to be a little bit meh if it means some of the other stuff coming up is a little bit better uh but let's talk about the actual things that are inside the 3.5 now let's talk about what the big boy himself the king of all pirates the number one man with the huge mustache. That's right. It's uh, Roger. It is Roger from One Piece. I don't know why I forgot Roger's first name. I'm pretty sure it's Gold D. Not Gold. It is. Gold D. Roger. Yeah, Gold D. Roger. Don't ask us what the D stands for. I think we're still a thousand chapters from knowing what the D stands for. We don't know. <laughs> we just know the D is important. Uh, why don't you tell us what he does then? All right, let me pull up my handy dandy OCHD site that everybody uses. <laughs> yeah, and if you don't, you should. So go support. You really OCHD. should. All right. 
So Roger's ultimate is 558 damage to one enemy, also doing 40,000 fixed damage to one enemy. And for three turns, he boosts the normal attack damage of red team members by 18%. His buddy skill is to convert one random bubble into a skill, convert three random bubbles to rainbow, charge your legend summon by 30%, boost the base damage of four skill bubbles by 10%. Until the start of the next turn, skill bubbles cannot be absorbed, burst, or converted by anyone other than the player. Uh, in the tower, it only lasts for one turn. Makes and sense. then if it his that long, it'd be a kind yeah, of the entire time that'd be pretty fucking crazy. Yeah. And then his passive is reduce the number of bubbles required to negate bind by eleven. This unit is immune to attack down. Boost the ultimate attack of all red allies by ten percent. And on turns three, seven, eleven, and fifteen, before this unit's turn, convert ten red bubbles into rainbow bubbles. Uh, <clears throat> Roger seems really good. Ah, uh, he's so good. He's uh, so fucking good. It's crazy. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, as I, as I think I said, he's better than every other Musa. I don't. I I would say so because like like I said last time when we were waiting in anticipation for what was going to come up, if it's Roger, there's no way Roger doesn't get released and isn't just like insanely good because he's literally broken every single One Piece gotcha that he's ever been released in. <laughs> He's he's just that fucking dude. He's like the Super Vegito for when Dokkan released during the one year anniversary. He's just yeah. That he's ki- he's like the Super Vegito of Jump in general. Yeah, um, he's, he, that he's guy. bonkers. He's like so busted. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, one time I went against him in PvP because I wasn't able to get him. Of course, uh, I went against him in PvP. He did not have class advantage. I had full health. I thought I would be fine. I almost fucking died. <laughs> I he did so much fucking damage to me in one turn. I was like, Jesus Christ, what is this? What the hell did this? They make this guy. He's crazy strong. So if you got him, good fucking on you. Because I don't. He's just built so crazily stupid that it feels like he's good in any scenario that you really want to put him in. Like as a buddy, as a, someone on the team. Yeah. It- He's so... It's insane how good he is. He just does, like, everything really, really well. And he hits really fucking hard. And he gives a ton of buffs just for existing. Mm -hmm. Because he gives normal attack damage buffs for every time he ultimates. And then his passive is just, like, a flat alt damage buff. Just for being there. Yeah, just for existing. Uh, Pretty good and pretty well done. I also like that on his um, actual card art... The one when you go in there, they use the panel from when he's just fucking laughing his ass off. So that's nice. <laughs> There's, again, this specific Roger is from the time where he was able to do a single move. So if you ever see any Roger with anything, it's going to be from this basic chapter. Yeah, the only time he fights ever? The only time he... he did wasn't really a fight. He lifted his sword once. And Whitebeard was there to go, the fuck you doing? And he's like going, ha 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 ha. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> That's basically it. Oh, I fucking love Roger. It's a shame he's not in it more because he can't really because he gets fucking smoked at the beginning. It's actually kind of funny because they build up Roger so much to say like he was the king of the pirate he was the best and then eventually they keep showing you pirates that are just like crazy strong it's like well roger was stronger than him roger was stronger than him so then you start to go so how were they able to execute roger yeah how did he get fucking caught uh they do eventually explain it of saying like uh i guess spoilers for anyone who cares i know you don't care but for anyone who cares skip for it for 20 seconds but basically he's dying of i think it's cancer so he knows that he doesn't oh, have very damn much looney anymore. tunes cancer yeah, he's <laughs> he's like, ah, I'm fucked. <laughs> so take care of my son, I'm out of here. I'm out this bitch. <laughs> What's up, Doc? Oh, it's cancer. Yeah, and he's like, all right, I'm going to let you get me then. He's like, why? Don't worry about it. <laughs> and then when, he get, when they put him up there, he's like, by the way, there's a place called One Piece. That's where all my treasures. You can be king too. And then the government goes, what? <laughs> and then they kill him. So he basically did it to do a shout cast. <laughs> he like showed up to do like drop his... uh. He, d- he did it to drop his um, SoundCloud and then peace out of the world itself and let them deal with the consequences. Uh, 
But yeah, I love Roger. Love that he's in the game. Love that he's super strong. <laughs> and yeah, there's nothing else more they can do it. I hope to eventually someday over the course of events pull him. <laughs> but the fact that it takes so many multis just doesn't seem likely for me anytime soon. Um, yeah, that's the thing with Muso units. They're so hard to get. They're so crazy hard to get. So insanely hard to get. Um, but yeah, that's Roger. Unless you have anything else to specifically say about Roger. No, just he's busted. He's probably the best unit in the game. Yeah, I could definitely Just see overall. That. I could see it. Next, uh, may as well stick with the One Piece characters for now, because we have the new free transforming Luffy, who I think goes from gear one to gear two. Uh, he's free to play. That just basically says, hey, we have a new transforming mechanic. Here you go. Here's a free character that uses it. Um, not much thing else to say other than I think that's kind of cool. They just gave you a free one. Yeah, they always kind of do that. Like, they gave you Goku and Luffy when the mm -hmm. duo units first came out, uh, which was cool. So I like that they just let you have the new mechanic, just yeah. so you can, like, fuck with it. Yeah. And this is from a pretty good fight, so I think his animations actually look pretty alright, too. Um... I would think that, and it's funny because this is always the form where people go like, because this is from one of the favorite arcs, this specific form that he does this. I think it's actually, if I would be as bold to say, I think that this actual Gear 2 is more liked than the other two that come after him, which is Snake Man and the the uh, the big belly the guy. The boy. Yeah, the big yeah. jumpy for Gear 4. Um, with the main reason just being that this is from an arc where he got to fuck up dudes and it was the first time he really got to do stuff. Um, but it feels like every time they ever add it to a game, it's like, it's, it suffers from the curse of like, it's too late. So, <laughs> so we can't technically make you better than the ones that came after you, like Snake Man and stuff like that. Um... But we are going to at least release you. We just don't think you're going to be as good as probably the fans want. Like, the fan desire for this card to be crazy busted is higher than what would make sense in the actual series. <laughs> I guess is what I'm trying to say here. It's kind of similar to when um, Dokkan releases a Super Saiyan Goku. Like, obviously, Namek Goku is the dude, right? He's the number one stop all everything. Not actually the strongest form of Goku. <laughs> Not by a long shot. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, but still the most iconic and the one fans love because it's from such an amazing moment. One where I hope, man, do you think Jimpudi will eventually get to releasing that version of, I feel like this transformation mechanic was made specifically so they could release more Dragon Ball characters. Well, I mean, there's already Namek Super Saiyan Goku in the game, but yeah. I imagine they will probably make a Kaioken that transforms. Oh yeah, that's true. All right. But yeah, that's Luffy. Next, just to may as well belt out all these free-to-play One Piece characters who came <laughs> because of Roger, we got Smoker, who I think makes sense for his release. He does not fit the theme of Legends at all. In Taiwan, he was released alongside Boa, which makes a little bit more sense, I guess, because I think they're in similar arcs or they interacted at some point. I don't actually remember because um, it's been so fucking long since I read that. Um... But it makes sense as a character, I guess, to use as filler if they ran out of time. Because he was definitely just made and he fits with One Piece character. So fuck it. Really, Smoker. Like, I read One Piece and I can tell you right now. Hey, how come one. they didn't give Smoker his big old cigar? Oh my god, he doesn't have his big ass cigar. No, he just looks like he's really angry all the time. He does. It kind of looks like he's chomping down. Without that cigar, he's, I feel like, less of a man. He just feels naked. <laughs> and also, it's not one cigar. The man smokes two cigars. Same time. <laughs> yeah, and he has none of them. None of them. That's weird. They let the pipe guy have his pipe. I guess Smoker is just too intense for them. They're like, we can't have him have two. Or maybe that's the limited version. We'll finally get him with the two <laughs> with the two cigars. Limited Smoker. You've been waiting for this. Here he is. Multiple cigars now. But yeah, other than that, there's not really much to say about Smoker. Again, I and I'm I even like Smoker from One Piece, and I like One Piece in general. I just really don't have much to say about Smoker. <laughs> uh, he doesn't really, he's not really that dude for me. When there's so many characters already in there, you know what I mean? It's like one of those. It's kind of like um, 
You know how in Yu Yu Hakusho, there's definitely characters where you look at them and you go like, oh man, they're rad. And then when you start talking about like, okay, so what are some of your favorite characters? They never get brought up. Like you kind of just go like, oh yeah, that character exists and is cool. But then when you actually get told, so who, what are your, some of your favorite characters from the series? They never get brought up. I feel like that's what Smoker is for One Piece, at least for me. I'm sure there's some diehard, diehard Smoker fan out there who will tell me that I'm wrong and how they are, how dare I back down smoker but that's how i feel about him and i'm sure you have even less feelings about smoker because you don't like one piece i literally have no feelings about smoker other than he's missing his cigars yeah yeah it's fair i do like his intro though i don't know if you've seen his intro um yet but he he basically shows up and he looks like he's gonna be a super hard ass he's gonna be like oh man this guy's tough as nails and then he bumps into a little girl with ice cream and then he her she drops she drops her ice cream and then smoker looks down at her and he goes like oh little girl let me help you out there let me get you some money he basically like is super nice and gentle he's like you know what accidents happen don't cry about it let me buy you something new here you go and here's some more treats and then everyone goes like that was not what i was expecting whatsoever it's like you know i'm only hard ass on the pirates because they fucking deserve it filthy fucking scum of the earth but actual regular people, I'm. This is why I'm doing it for, right? <laughs> it doesn't make sense to be mean to them. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Come on, <laughs> don't be an asshole. So I like his intro for sure. That's what I'll say about Smoker. So don't don't get on me about right, Smoker. I'll, I'll mention the one good thing. <laughs> I think don't at me about Smoker. Don't at me about Smoker. I have there's cool moments with Smoker, but um. Not in this context. They needed to have more context for his release in order for it to make sense. Again, for again, Legends theme, it doesn't fit. And speaking of Legends, this guy actually legitimately fits. We got Whitebeard, but this time he's young. Where is Whitebeard? There he is. Ah, oh, Edward Newgate, before he was really called Whitebeard. Zen, have you... How do you feel about the fact that Whitebeard has no beard? Uh, yeah, well, that's already weird, yeah. but I'm more concerned about the fact that Whitebeard has, like, long blonde surfer dude hair, but he <laughs> still has that Moon Knight mustache. Oh, yeah, he does. It's majestic, isn't it? It really sells with that, I, at this point, I have to assume he was born with that mustache. <laughs> that at some point, he just, like, as a child, grew this mustache or maybe he was a baby he was born with a mustache and it's not been leaving out because until i actually looked at him because i read it in manga form i've never seen it in the anime or anything like this i had no idea he was blonde until jimpudi released this unit and i was like wait apparently he's in the series blonde because i said that when i first saw him and people were like yeah do you not follow one piece and i was like of course i don't follow one piece oh i guess he always wears the do-rag so i never noticed well, no, but... you see him young. Huh, really? I don't... Again, but also, I never saw the anime. I read the, the manga, and I never noticed the blonde hair in manga form, because you can't really notice blonde hair. Unless oh, yeah, because like you can't paint. tell. Yeah. Yeah. So I had no idea he had blonde hair. As far as I was concerned, he was just a bald dude for a vast majority of it. Um, But young Whitebeard, I felt this way when I read him. He just looks like a straight-up goof. <laughs> But a respectable goof that I kind of love because he's got like the, the like the porn pirate look going. You know what I'm saying? Like he should he's like uh, like he could be on romance novels if it wasn't for the mustache. Because he's got a huge open yeah. shirt. Yeah. This man's got a a d a, a v neck so fucking deep it's basically embroiled into the actual t shirt. Um. His showing a little bit of abs and all that other stuff, but yeah, the blonde hair is definitely a shocker. I think everything about it is a little bit weird after you get used to the do rag look that he usually does with the giant. Actually, funny enough, I think is if you look at the Jim Pudi vert, there is actually a huge difference between old white beard and young white beard. The young white beard's beard is less uh, pronounced. If you look at it, it's actually grown in I'm his old age. Right because if you look at the old white beard, he's it's like strong and standing upwards, but the young one is a little bit. Oh, more you're curved. right. It's it's gone further out to the sides. <laughs> yeah. 
there's a lot going on with Whitebeard that I don't fully understand the logistics of Whitebeard, but I've just kind of learned to accept it. Um, the reason I brought up the Whitebeard thing is that I actually had a huge uh, conversation slash argument with a friend of mine who was reading One Piece, and he was getting on me about, like, how come Whitebeard doesn't have a beard? And then I had to go, like, because beard and mustache are the same kanji in Japan. And then when he translated it to Whitebeard... Um, he kept the name because he was like, well, it's a reference to Blackbeard. And no one at any point ever told Oda, you do realize that he does not have a beard. Because in he Japan, is beardless. He's beardless. He has no beard. But he's like, no, he has a beard. It's it's right on top. So it's a really a case of just funny localization of this, like, what is considered a beard is also considered to be the word for mustache. So he just kind of went with it. I mean, there was like a person who, like, uh... Uh, sent a letter to him saying like how come Whitebeard has no beard and he basically went on a, an explanation going like um so yeah when I first looked at it it wasn't until the translations told me it's like this guy doesn't have a beard and I said that's crazy and then he's like no well let me show you this and then when he was presented this giant fallacy he went ah well his name's Whitebeard and we're keeping it that way so when there's no changes there will be no added <laughs> He just kind of went like, huh. Anyway, <laughs> so this is Whitebeard. Here he is with his giant mustache. I respect that. You have to respect that. Yeah, there's a certain level of just like, huh. Like, for as much people like to build up Oda saying, like, he's so forward. He's so thinking. He's like, yeah, he does a lot of that. But he also does a lot of just like, all right, I messed up. But let's roll with this. Let's see where this goes. <laughs> let's see how long we can kind of go before people start to notice more of it. It's cool. <laughs> uh, the my other fun things is uh, fans sending in letters and saying like, I think this character's birthday should be this because it core it specifically kind of goes with this character's theme and this going like that. And they'll give like a full backstory of why this specific date would make sense. Like I think someone said like Chopper's birthday should be on Christmas because he's a reindeer and he comes from Christmas Island. And his response was, "You're right. His birthday is now Christmas." <laughs> <laughs> correct now yes you're so great. right and then yeah and then after that people started sending in birthdays and giving their explanation he's just like that sounds great i love it <laughs> let's do it so I, I i definitely respect him for his just like let's go let's both let's all make a manga we're we're all the one piece here <laughs> we the one piece team up exactly so yeah that's Whitebeard. i don't have much to say because he's a free character uh, I probably would have said he should have been a banner character because Whitebeard is like, he's almost kind of Roger tier in my eyes of like, it's kind of crazy that both, because the other Roger is limited, right? Or is he free? There is no other Roger. The other is there, the old Roger. Not old Roger, I'm stupid. Um, Bla Whitebeard? Uh, Whitebeard? Yeah. Yeah, he's limited, but he sucks. Yeah, it just doesn't feel right to me to have a Whitebeard that sucks and then having a new one you'd basically have a new way to kind of do them right and then they make them free to play i think more people would actually legitimately have spent for him um but for whatever reason nope because we already have the other limits i guess it's less it's good for me because it's less to summon on but i don't know feels a little bit weird feels a little bit weird but let's move on huh next speaking of it it feels a little bit weird we got Byakyu Ishigami from <laughs> Dr. Stone. Or is he yeah, it's Dr. Stone. Senku's daddy. Senku's dad. Before we get into him, I want to preface it right now that I actually love Dr. Stone and I love Senku's dad. Next statement. He does not deserve to be on this celebration. No, I don't know why he's here. I don't know if it was just to be like, hey, Dr. Stone's over. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I think in some case you can actually make the case of him being legendary because, like, you know, Senku learns a lot. Like, like not to undercut his specific achievements in Dr. Stone, which is, like, setting up that village and finding a network to eventually kind of relay to Senku. Like, he does a lot of cool shit, and he's a cool character, but I just don't feel like on this specific, like, legendary kind of feel that he doesn't necessarily fit. Like, even his character, because his animations are really funny, when he attacks, he does, like, a little, like, a little XD face, and he puts his hands up forward. <laughs> like, he really does... I mean, doesn't... I... Yeah. I just don't know why he's here, that's all. Yeah, I really feel like they should have better saved it for a 
Dr. Stone event. Like, Dr. Stone should definitely have another event uh, later down the line. With another limited, I don't know who the limited would be. <laughs> other than, uh, other than... Ryusui? Yeah, actually. That would make a lot of sense. Well, actually, based off of... Ah, actually, yeah. Yeah, he would make a lot of sense to make it, actually. Hmm. I wish probably to do another duo unit as well. There's plenty of warrior dudes like back to back that you could do to make them unlimited in that case. But yeah, it feels like like you said it might have just been because Doctor Stone was ending and they felt like we should have someone from Doctor Stone, but it just doesn't feel like the right call. Maybe if they were afraid of actually spoiling it, of saying like we can't actually include any of the characters that are, um end game forms of dr stone until we do an actual event for dr stone i guess i guess would be my kind of thinking of it like we can't I have guess. Like, a, the other version of suika suika that's how you pronounce oh, it oh adult right? suika yeah like that would have been at least <laughs> better representation for dr stone because it would at least been like ah she doesn't really fit the legend theme but it is kind of tied into the end of dr stone a little bit well, just, to be fair, Byakia is sort of a legend in the lore because he's the one that that makes it possible to restart humanity. Yeah, I think in that case, when you made and he wrote the memory, he wrote the stories that Ishigami Village tells to Senku, so he's kind of a legend to them. He's de- he's definitely a legendary figure, which is why I was like a little bit like <laughs> hesitant of going like I don't this is not an attack on the character. I just feel like for the specific celebration with the kind of... But yeah, it does feel weird. It does feel a bit weird. Smoker is definitely the weirdest. Don't get it wrong. Smoker is definitely super does not deserve it. If there was anyone we were kicking off of this boat, it's Smoker. (laughs) 100%. (laughs) Uh, It feels a little bit weird. But I do like him, and I do like that he's kind of in the game, and his animations are kind of funny as well. (laughs) I kind of like his little fight animation, and I like his uh, main ult as well. And he's free, so there's no real complaints on that. How do you feel? Uh, he's free, and he's got a cute sprite. It's fine. You know what would be really funny to have included from Dr. Stone? Hmm? That one panel joke from the final chapter of the female Senku. <laughs> the one where Bachi's like that would like, be pretty funny would you be interested to see what my character would look like as a woman how would I draw her do you think I would have any restraint the answer is no <laughs> uh, I, I was dying laughing at that I reread that page over again <laughs> it was just like that was a man who just like loves what he does he's like yeah let me just draw this female character in real quick for this gag um I would definitely like another Dr. Stone anything. It's still kind of crazy to me that there's only one limited for Dr. Stone. But eh, They'll get more, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure down the line somewhere. Like, I, I see no way that Ryusui is not one, now that I think about it. Yeah, he definitely has to be one. He's just too, too cool for school to not make a limited down the line. Next, uh, here's a very surprising one. We got a new Master Roshi who's also free. There's nothing else to say about Master Roshi. Yeah, he's definitely <laughs> he's definitely legendary. I will fight any Dragon Ball fan who tries to fucking fight me on that. <laughs> Master Roshi is legendary. Doesn't matter his uh, strange fixation with women. We will talk about that when the appropriate time goes for Master Roshi's due date. But he's still a pretty legendary figure in all of Dragon Ball. All things w- was said. And I like his little outfit yeah. too. I love fucking Master Roshi so much. How you feel about Master Roshi's on? Uh, I like his little button up that he's got on. Yeah, it's pretty funny to me. I don't know why. <laughs> I think Master Roshi's design is just really funny. Like Toriyama has f- fucking done it again. He's created a design that both is like this is obviously a sensei character, and this man is funny. But also during like the dramatic scenes where Master Roshi is like looking down and furrowed, you're like, oh shit, some actual shit's going down. Because when Master Roshi looks serious, I actually think he legitimately like sells a lot of the action stuff well. And I want to say it's probably because of the shades. Because once you take off the shades, it's a little bit more obvious that he's just a very old man. Yeah, he's just an old fella. Yeah. And he's always so goofy that like when he stops being goofy, yeah, you shit re- gets real. Yeah, shit gets real, man. This is real. The Saiyans are here. And Master Roshi's pissed. 
<laughs> I, <laughs> he's pissed because he can't fight. That's actually the most hard hitting moment in Dragon Ball Z is when Roshi goes like, God, I used to be the strongest person on earth and I can't do anything. I was like, damn, yep. you're right. You damn and right. then he never gets a serious moment again. <laughs> no. Well, he gets one in Super, kind of. Nah, sort of. Sort of. If they had gone full hog, but they can't go full hog because then Jiren would have been eliminated for killing an old man. Yeah. Unless the 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 Zenos went, actually, murder's cool now. <laughs> wow, they killed the shit out of that old man. I think murder should be allowed. Yeah, murder's allowed, everyone. Everyone, you can do murder now. And then Hit goes, son of a bitch, I already got eliminated. <laughs> Fucking these little kids, hate them. Free Master Roshi, feel free to get him. I love Roshi, that's all we need to really say about him. Next. <laughs> Another free character? No, is this not a free character? I'm dumb. Next is the actual limited, a limited from Black Clover. I was about to completely fucking skip Black Clover. <laughs> um, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, again, <laughs> no, no shade to the Black Clover fans because I don't read your manga, so I can't shit on you. But I feel like the internet has already done that. Just know that I don't really have any yeah. negativity towards Black Clover. <laughs> Uh, Asta, who, this man, if you love Black Clover, you should fucking love Jampudi, because holy shit, has there never been a game that cares more about Black Clover than Jampudi? Oh, I know. This game fucking loves Black Clover. So much. So he's the first transforming unit that's limited. Zen, tell us what he does, because he has two two different things that he does, at least in his ult, depending on his forms. Okay, so we'll do. The, I'll do the buddy skill and the passive first, because they don't mm -hmm. change. Um, the buddy skill is convert one block, one red, one blue, one yellow, and one heart bubble to green. Remove the highest ultimate attack damage boost from all enemies. And for four turns, boost the ultimate attack damage of green by 24%. For three turns, boost the recovery of your buddy by eight. And for three turns, when this unit's buddy is attacked, boost their attack by five. Passive is reduce the number of bubbles required to negate bind for this unit by 11. Boost his ultimate attack damage by 11. If the enemy is a DPS class, reduce the number of bubbles required to create a skill for this unit by 2, and reduce damage received for this unit by 1,000 or 70,000 in the tower. If the enemy is a tank class, reduce the number of bubbles required to create a skill for this unit by 3, and reduce damage received for this unit by 600 or 100,000 in the tower. So his ultimates now, in his base form, his ultimate is inflict 536 damage to one enemy, and if the enemy is a tank, inflict an additional 80%. For three turns, boost this unit's attack by 30%. In his transformed state, it is inflict 500 damage to one enemy, absorb that enemy's highest ultimate attack damage buff, and apply it to this unit. For one turn, reduce damage received for this unit by 4,000. For five turns, boost this unit's recovery by 15%. For two turns, yellow bubbles have a 100% chance to spawn as a heart column paint bubble. Maximum of one. So yeah, this Asta is crazy good. They've really, really, similar to Roger, where they're just like, this is the first of this kind of type of transforming, so we kind of have to do it right. Plus, this is Black Clover, so the director absolutely loves Black Clover, so we're just going to make him super crazy good, and he is super crazy good uh you actually have more experience with him because you actually have him right so how do you feel using yes. him uh in pve he's kind of like well, whatever like i don't really use him there but in pvp he's so busted it's ridiculously busted yeah so which which form do you really use more of uh i usually go into the transformed form just for the the absorb but if i'm fighting against somebody who is a tank i will stay in the regular form because his ult does like 606% if you do that, or 616, I think, yeah. percent if you do that. Yeah. Man. He, I think he this... hits so hard, yeah. and he gives so many buffs, he fucking slams. Yeah. I think this is my favorite ap application of a unit that has the deal bonus damage if a unit is of a specific class. Because it's literally like, well, if they don't, if they're not that class, boom, don't worry about it. We have another form for you. <laughs> And this one will do something different as the trade-off for it. Um, I really like that because that's the one thing I kind of don't like about the units that 
always do a specific amount of damage to a specific class. It's like I don't fully understand which which class is which for a lot of these characters. So if I could just have the option to have the form two and just be able to be like, I guarantee you that this will always be here. Or like I don't want to move a unit specifically because they're fighting against a certain form, I guess. Um, right. I like I don't like the variety that you get with this unit. So good on him for making... This is a pretty good showing for a Transformer unit. And I think them doing him so well kind of gives hope for future ones of this kind, right? At least in my eyes. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah, they're they're going to be good. Yeah, they're definitely going to be good. Um, and if you're wondering why that's important, I would point to Dokkan for all the times they've ever introduced a failed mechanic. <laughs> it's very important that the first unit you use who has this brand new mechanic in some way slams. Because if they don't, then you've basically DOA'd the entire thing, and now you're just waiting for the actual good version of it. So Right, yeah, because then you wouldn't be exciting for anybody. Yeah. And the way they've also handled transformation is also pretty good, because you just literally tap a button. And it's, I think, a one-turn cooldown after you use it, right? Uh, I don't know if it's one turn. I've never, like, Transform used back. it and then had it wear off, because I used it in PvP. Yeah, that's fair. Um... It's, it doesn't wear off. I think you can just easily switch between the two forms, which I think is more interesting than the kind of just locking No, it, it does wear off. It, it runs out after a certain amount of time. Oh, it does? Okay. Yeah, Good you can't more. stay transformed. I think it's two turns transformed, and then you turn back. Uh, that probably makes more sense for PvE, definitely, to have a limit yeah. on that. Because otherwise... Yeah. So either way, it's it's important that you don't neglect both forms. Both forms have to be good because they will transform back, which I think is a much better way of handling transformation units than just saying they will always stay in this form forever. Because at that point, you're just making basically making a unit who's not good in Form 1 and then turning them into Form 2 or something like that. You're waiting for them to kind of pop off in a lot of instances. But yeah, that's that Asta. And I don't have very much to say about Asta the person other than I think I, think I actually like him in Form 1 better. I think he looks better in Form 1 for me. Because he has a little like devil guy there who looks like his little mini-me. Yeah, but if you... Um... If you win in his transform state, he like uh, does the Arnold Schwarzenegger Carl Weathers meme with his devil <laughs> friend. Okay, that's very good. <laughs> that's very <Yeah>. good. <laughs> it's really good. Good on him, man. Again, Black Clover fans eating good. Fuck the people who say anything else. <laughs> Enjoy your Asta. Enjoy your giant devil man. I mean, even that animation sounds fucking rad to me. So whatever. Good in my book. Uh, let's move on to the free-to-play character, because this is actually, I'm, I'm going to guess, someone that can freely shit on, because none of us know anything. This man's name is called Not Fast. Or yeah, I don't know who the fuck this is. Not Fast. I appreciate the pun. That is it. Next character. <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> uh, and finally, we have the My Hero uh, dudes. I think this is it, right? There's I think so, much. yeah. Yeah, okay. We'll go into the... I'm, I'm going to double check, but I'm pretty sure it's the My Hero dudes and then we're done. This is actually interesting because on the free-to-play side, we'll talk about them first. This is our first uh, grindable villain duo, I guess? Unless there's... Been yeah, uh, it, is it the first? Like For for villain specifically, I know for villains yeah, it has to be the I first. Yeah, I feel like it is. Because um, usually the duo free ones are... Not actually no, Yusuke and Gon were farmable, right? Uh yeah, so was the original Goku and Luffy, but okay. obviously not villains. Yeah, no but villains. also they were farmable in like a weird way. Like I don't think did you farm an event for Goku and or no, not Goku uh, for Luffy and for... I meant for Luffy and Gon. Luffy and Gon? Did, no, didn't you get them I... from missions? I didn't I don't have Luffy and Gon, so I'm not hundred percent sure on that one. Not god damn it! I'm so stupid. Use K and gone. Yeah, I think there was a combo of two of them, right? You were doing for missions, and then there was. I don't actually remember if there was a specific stage. It might have been one of those daily do it once stages. Because I I feel like this is the first duo that I'm aware of that you just farm like a regular farmable unit. Yeah. Like yeah. in a catastrophe thing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking in terms of first actual legitimately grinding stuff down kind of way. Um, and it might be the first villain duo ever in the whole game? Yeah, it is for sure that one. Because yeah. they usually like to wait out for a lot of the villain stuff. Uh, and it's Shigaraki and All for One. 
Uh, so get ready for your the, your meme folders. He's ready here to sell you your cryptocurrency. He's ready for it. <laughs> he's ready to do your bonds, whatever he's got for you, <laughs> and other <laughs> shonen and chill memes, whatever you got going on. All I all, all for one has been ruined for me, by the way, just because of all your fucking jokes. <laughs> for all for one, <laughs> crypto bro, all for one. Yeah, I'm unable to look at him in any other way than that way that you've done. And I don't even watch your show. You just you just automatically just you're so whole hog for a whole hog for it, and you're just so down for it that I just can't. That's the only way I see him now. That's the only way I know him as. Is the second he came out, I was like, God damn it! Why am I thinking of fucking crypto now that I would look at him? <laughs> <laughs> fucking Zen. NFT ultimate. Uh, if only. So yeah, they're new. They're free. I think it's actually kind of neat for them to start doing this, and I hope that. They should have done this with the Tagura brothers. They yeah, it's so weird to me that the Tagura brothers were not this. No, because we're like, oh man, that'd be really cool. And then they come out with Shigaraki and all for one. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Wait a fucking minute. <laughs> Wait a yeah, minute. Yeah, it was literally like two seconds ago. Oh come on, you th- you should have introduced it with them because they're definitely the one of the most iconic duos for Shonen Jump. When I think of two villains in the same <laughs> peas in the pod, and I guess. Um, it's definitely them. So I found it was a little bit weird, but whatever. They're here now. Hopefully they do a little bit more because I actually like the idea of villain team ups. Um, and this is a pretty good starting one because it's Shigaraki and all for one. Even uh, jokes aside, this is back in the old days, back when they first showed up. <laughs> not current modern day version. It's not weird man, man meat. That's not the right word I'm looking for. Constantly shirtless Shigaraki. It's not that version of it. There you go. It's a little bit more his actual No, expression. no, not, yeah. It's when he's still, like, the original design. Yeah, it's still the original design, which I think I'm more of a fan of that original weird face design. Yeah, I guess. I think I like this one more. It also does look like a really weird, like, um, Halloween father and son when they're put together like this in the Djibouti art style. <laughs> it really does look like business dad bought himself a mask for his son. <laughs> To hang out with his son for a bit. But did not actually yeah, have time. Yeah, does, kind of. <laughs> yeah, he did have time to, like, change out the suit. So he's just like, it's like, Dad, you're not fitting with the theme. Son, I think I'm doing perfectly fine. <laughs> Go hang out with your little friends. I'll be right over here in my basket. I don't know why he sounds like Markiplier, but I'm going to say that's my brother's influence of whenever I think of a deep voice. But regardless, I like that they do it in there. I like that they're going to start doing more of this, and I hope they do more. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, I agree. I think it's a cool one. They they could have picked worse combination for this. It's not like the main one I would have picked, but it's not the worst one either. No, um, it, it definitely makes. I think it's pretty cool. Thematic sense as well, because of the character that is the limited, which is Deku and All Might. Um, it it, it fits a the theme, so I think it's fun. Like obviously, there are some more cool pairings that they could definitely do in for my hero for that kind of stuff. But it's not like a terrible one. I was trying to think of a terrible pairing, but then I was like, oh, no, that'd actually be rad. Like Lizard Man and someone else. <laughs> the, the the ultimate pairing to go against Deku and All Might. <laughs> Fuck, who was the one who usually hanged out with? Twice. There you go, Lizard Man and Twice. Imagine if oh, it was Oh, yeah, Twice and, uh, fuck, Spinner. Spinner, there you go. I knew you would know his name. <laughs> I just know him as Lizard Man because he's a Lizard Man. Um... It'd be way funnier if they did them. But also, I would really like that. And I would like that actually to be something down the line. So let's move on. Here's the main, the final dude. That's right. Deku and All Might. All Might definitely fits the legendary theme. So I'm good in that mind. And Deku's hanging out there because it w- they did not meet their quota for Deku's release yet, I guess. <laughs> not enough Deku's. We, we need, need our fourth and then fifth Deku back to back. We need more. Also, I think this is the first time they've done it where it's an actual, like, back cover. Like, there's a barcode in the... Oh, actually, this might just be OCHD, now that I think about it. But there's a barcode in their uh, their art for their for the main thing that they use. Oh, it's it's a volume cover. Yeah, so it's, I don't know if they usually use volume covers or not for their art, but that's a first for me, at least. Uh, In terms of what this unit does, tell us, because it doesn't actually say it on OCHD. <laughs> not yet? It hasn't been updated yet. 
Do you know what they do off the top of your head? Um. Hold up, like if I really it. sat down and thought about it, I could piece it together. But I think it might be on OCHD's Twitter. Um, yeah, it's definitely on his Twitter. Because I do use them, and so I like vaguely know what they do, but right, not well enough that I would get all the details correct. So there's no point in trying. Yeah, it's on OCHD's Twitter. There you go. Sent it to you. So it's reason. their ultimate is 525 percent damage to one enemy, and if the enemy has a barrier, inflict an additional 145 percent. That's a shitload of damage. Mm-hmm. Um. At the start of the next turn, convert one random bubble to a skill bubble with 20% base damage. For one turn, boost this unit's ultimate attack damage by 26%. For one turn, reduce damage received for this unit by 800 or 8,000 in the tower. Buddy skill is convert one random bubble to a skill. Convert a total of five green, yellow, and hearts to blue. For two turns, guard 21% of all damage received for blue team members by or for blue team members, and then for three turns, boost the normal attack damage of all blue team members by 25%. Passive is reduce bleed damage received for this unit by 4740. Boost this unit's attack by 10%. If this unit's ultimate attack is activated at the end of the turn, up to seven yellow bubbles will be shot at one enemy and inflict 3200 damage times the number of bubbles shot as fixed damage. Yeah, that's them. <clears throat> These dudes deal so much damage. Yeah, they hit really hard. Like, they hit really hard. Crazy hard. I actually, I was able to pull them. Well, because they saw the video and I had enough. It wasn't like a struggle to try and do it. I had plenty. <laughs> I had saved up for them. Um, they are crazy strong, both in PvE and PvP. Because in the PvE area, it's just super easy because you just constantly it's the same thing as yuna like because yuna gets her skill bubble back and that just there's no limit on it so you just keep you're basically able to endlessly cycle in their um skill bubble as long as you remember to press it (laughs) before the turn ends basically so i like that part about them they basically destroy anything with a barrier i think in pvp wise i don't think there's any character that gives you a barrier yet right it's not really. It gives you a barrier. No, no, it's not something that's going to come out in PvP. No, chances are not. But if they ever did, this guy, these two, would basically kill him DOA with how much fucking damage. Oh yeah, they do. I mean, I don't think we'll ever get someone that makes barrier like to that extent. But yeah, if they did, this guy will destroy them. So absolutely, because five twenty five percent is already pretty fucking good. Yes, it is. And then you add in 145% damage. And it's just... Yeah, it's what, 670%? Is that my math yeah, right on that? Yeah, it's 100% right on that. That's just from those two. And that's a hilarious amount of damage to do. Fucking insane amount of damage, yeah. Yeah. But they've done really well with this unit. It's This is probably the one... Because we were talking about this off-screen, but a lot of the My Hero units are weird in their limited choices. Like, Endeavor, before he was the number one hero, is one of them. Um, Deku and Aerie is another yeah, one. Yeah, it's like Sports Fest Endeavor, I'm pretty sure. Like, hang on. Yeah, like, way back. Yeah, it's like... Bro, what the fuck? It's like Endeavor from when they fought Stain. Yeah. It's around that era. They have the... Which is like... Why? Yeah. They have the Deku and Eri, which makes sense for the end of that arc. I got no real complaints about that one. I also think Yeah, it's really I mean, funny. that was 100% full cow, so that's, like, yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, so I can give a pass to that. Also, it is really funny that he fights with a little girl, and when you beat him, <laughs> you basically yeet off the face of the planet a little girl, but... Yeah, a little tiny girl. <laughs> yeah, for Eri, just getting completely... <laughs> she got it on the, the backstart of that. Sorry about that. All Might, who was released way too early and is just not good anymore. I don't know if he was good at release. And that's basically it. Like, three limiteds altogether, not counting this one. Yep. And then one of them being Deku, the other one being All Might. And they're like, we need a new limited. How about Deku and All Might? Yeah, that's a little bit weird. I would definitely have released a little bit more limiteds of their series. But it's so weird that there's, for how popular, I guess, My Hero is... That they only really have four. Like, it's actually weird to me that I feel like Jumpudi exists in this opposite dimension where Black Clover has all this support. <laughs> it has all these limiteds of varied characters. And then over <laughs> for them, it's much less. Like, the other uh, limited for My Hero is also the, lim- the, the crossovers, which is Bakugo and Deku. But that's a crossover, so it doesn't really count. 
But if you want to, if you want to count them, sure, that's two more. But that's still another deck. Oh my god, I completely forgot about that. That means there's going to be six Dekus. Yeah, six Dekus, and with a, a limited Bakugo coming up, it's even more Bakugo. So really, they're just doubling down at this point. The next limited for my hero is going to be Endeavor. <laughs> but number one, although hero I will Endeavor. say that that um, Bakugo's ultimate animation is so sick. Yeah, it does look pretty good. It's a shame I don't really care all that much about Bakugo, but it's fine. It does Bakugo's really like good. the only MHA character that I really still like. So now I'm like, damn it, I can't skip. I have to get him. I've I've never liked Bakugo. I've, 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 but I've at least evolved to the point where it's not pure blinding hatred. It's now moved on to uh, old being ignorance of like, I'm just going just to ignore apathy. You. Yes, it's kind of <laughs> like, it's better to be ignored than to be hated. <laughs> so I'm just not going to really put up the effort or put up the blocks or really fight anyone on it. It's just kind of like, uh, pass me by. <laughs> pass me by slowly as you go by. I just like him because he's a my hero character that when they're on the screen, I don't get bored. He is at least always doing things. I Which is that. few and far between. Yeah. He is constantly. I do like his name. If, if, if the name of the unit of the Bakugo is Murder King Explosion whatever, I will summon for him. But oh, like... dude, it better be. What is it? Like, Lord King Explosion Murder? Yes, that version of Bakugo I would summon. Also, I would gladly summon for a Bakugo that teamed up with Best Genist. Yes, that would be so good. Oh my be. god. At that point, it'd be like... Limited fuck. Bakugo and Best Genist. And he has, like, the fucking hair? Yes. <laughs> Give me all of that. Limited. Musoi, fuck it. <laughs> the Musoi for my hero is Bakugo and Best Genist. I want it. I need it. But yeah, they've definitely had some weird choices, and now that we can talk about weird choices, let's talk about that there is a My Hero event actually coming up. The final word on it is that I think this unit is good. I actually like that they kind of fit the theme with All Might being legendary, and he's kind of passing on the legend. And the unit itself is just super fucking good. So all good in my eyes. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, there you go. I agree completely. The unit's yeah. so good. I use them in PvP, and they're crazy fun. I love it, it. One of my favorite things in PvP is units that leave the alt orb on the next round behind, just so you get that little bit of extra damage out of it. Yeah, Ugh, so love it. And I've been using and it that also with... because it explodes, it builds up legend summon for you too. Super oh, good. That's very nice. Yeah, and I've been using them with um with uh, Yuna, so <laughs> it's been a lot of just alt summonings. It's pretty nice by the time if they survive me till the end, then they're basically boned at that point. Because I have just so much, um, I've dealt so much damage to them that it doesn't even matter that I'm not inflicting damage over time to them. So, yeah, I don't even use like dot setters anymore. Like I always used to use uh, Tushiro for Frost. I don't even use them anymore. Yeah. Right now I'm using uh, Tanjiro Gyu because everyone that has them will always yep. slot because they're yep. literally just the best one. They're just basically like um, Ace and Luffy, but better. They're they're like. Ace and Luffy, but come way better. Yep. Um, in the middle, I use uh, the transforming Asta, and then after him, I use Deku and All Might. And then right now in the back, I'm using Roger because he's boosted by the event. Um, once the event goes away and Roger's not boosted anymore, I'm gonna go back to Hiei and Killua. Yeah, that's a um, Hiei and Killua was my current final one. Uh, really good stuff. But let's go on. So the My Hero event that's coming up, we may as well talk about these characters now. Because <laughs> it's limited Bakugo. We will come back when we know what Bakugo does. But we at least know Bakugo is coming. Explosion, Explosive Explosion is the name of his parentheses thing. This will be the first solo Bakugo. And it is kind of weird, actually, that he is basically his Sasuke and he does not. It took him this long to add a limited version of Bakugo. <laughs> it is a little bit weird. I'll give him that. But at least his animation is really fun. It's really oh, great. it's so good. It's like dummy good. I like his sprite too. Yeah, very nice, very well done. And then also joining him for the event, these are the characters we know so far. So if we want to go back to the talking about the weird addition of characters. Let's talk about they are adding Kaminari, Denki to Kamimon Kaminari, another Deku, uh, Hanto Saro, aka Tape Guy. And Itsuka Kendo, the... <laughs> Don't forget Shinzo. Shinzo? Did I forget someone? Yeah. Oh, shit, did I? 
Oh, you're right, Shinzo. I forgot he was announced first before Bakugo. Yeah, before Bakugo for some reason. And Mineta's getting a five star. He's getting his three stars going all the way to Yeah, five. he's getting bumped to five, which is funny. It's great because me and a bunch of Japanese people are like Super Vegito, and then I think someone else was like, Maybe it's Uraraka. It's like, nah, it's Mineta. <laughs> it's him and his weird balls. <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely a weird bunch of characters. There's no better way of saying it. So what I want to know is which one of these do you think are going to be free? Uh, that, there's no way they release another Banner Deku. This has to be another free. Actually, it's been a while since a Banner Deku, right? Is it? Are there seven Dekus? There might just be a shit ton of Dekus, man. There's Hang so on. Many... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to look this up. This is infuriating to me. How many Dekus? For a character, again, my hero is known for having a lot of characters that people like. Okay. So there's the original Deku. Correct. Oh, uh, the, the one from the launch of the game. There's full cowl 100% with Aerie on his back. There's the 20% that does like the finger flicks. There's the farmable one that's the 1 million percent one. There is Deku and All Might. Uh, there's the crossover Deku with Jin, and now there's this new one. So that's the seventh Deku. And then I feel like you get a wish, right? Because we've <laughs> we've gotten all the seven Dekus. We've all seven Dekus. And now we get to get Hobo Deku from the most current arc. <laughs> Stinky clean. The, uh, the I would actually pull hard for a um... for Hobo Deku. <laughs> For, uh, yeah, for, like, crazy murder Deku. I would, too, actually. Limited <laughs> Batman Deku. I would go in for that. Damn it, they know this. This, But it is it is a kind of, actually, now, when you bring it up, seven is too much for a character. That's even, I think that's bordering on Luffy territory, isn't it? I think Luffy has about that many. Yeah, but usually Luffy ten, has ten Luffys. Ten, ten Luffys, but most of those ten are in different form. Like, zombie Luffy and... Different hat Luffy. Yeah, so he's got Ace and Luffy. He's got Transforming Luffy. Uh, Nightmare Luffy. There's one that's just Luffy in like a blue vest. I don't know what that's from. Um, there is the original Luffy from the start of the game. There's Luffy Taro. There's uh, Bound Man, Snake Man, and Gear Second. That's a lot of Luffys for sure. And then the crossover Luffys as well, right? There's a cross uh there. yeah, which is just it's just Luffy and Goku, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um Yeah. It's a lot. But at least Luffy has a, like slightly different variations of him. I feel like a lot of the Deku's look very similar. Are just Deku, yeah. Yeah. Cause he's still Deku kinda... has seven I that might be as many as like Goku. No way. Uh maybe it's the uh, inner Dokkan Amy going. There's no way there's only No, seven Goku Dokkan. has nine. Nine Gokus? Okay, that makes more sense. Nine Gokus, seven Dekus, ten Luffys. One. Um, one, eleven Naruto's, it looks like. Jesus. I mean, it didn't, if you want to go full force, there is technically a Deku dressed up as Naruto and a Naruto dressed up as Deku as well. Well, that's their... That, those aren't different alternate, units. Those are costumes units, for their yeah. base unit. Yeah. Um, Ichigo, I think, only has like five. Really? Uh, huh. Okay, sure. Weird. He has okay. six. There's six Ichigos. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense now. Um, Tanjiro has five. <laughs> Tanjiro. I, I know it's a lot of the... Uh, you did mention Luffy has ten, but giving five Tanjiro sounds almost as ridiculous as seven Dekus to me. Yeah, it, it really does. Especially because three of them are limited. Yeah, that's way worse. <laughs> there are more limited Tanjiros than there are not limited Tanjiros. That's insanity to me. They know that people will gladly pay for Tanjiro. Oh that's yeah, because some... people fucking love Demon Slayer, dude. The only Tanjiros that aren't limited are the one that came out in the very beginning of the game and uh, the farmable one where he's wearing like the kimono and the mask. A.K.A. Boulder Deku. Not Boulder Deku. Yeah, Boulder, Boulder, Tanjiro, Tanjiro, Boulder Deku. <laughs> Red Man Deku would have fucking smashed. Put him in the Demon Slayer universe, he would fucking destroy that boulder. <laughs> yeah, one. he would crush that fucking boulder. Easily. Power scaling boulders. 
But anyway, it's it's a lot of Dekus. It's really weird, <laughs> and uh, there's hopefully yeah, probably it's, just... it's too too many. I would probably say, but in terms of the uh, free yeah, ones, for fucking Deku, um, even though he is the main character, it still feels a lot. Like they need to at least good to release the Batman Deku and stuff like that. Like other forms yeah. of them. Also, there's only like okay, only one of well now three three of the Dekus are limited, but only one of them is free. <laughs> Okay, so this one could totally be a free Deku then. It I, think could, that, I don't think it is. I don't think it's going to be free. You don't think he's going to be free? It's definitely not. I think the free least. ones are going to be Kendo, and then either Kaminari or Shinso. Well, here's my theory, the feeling on this: Bakugo has to be um, used to beat up a Deku. So that's why. Oh, I feel you like think Deku will be the boss for Bakugo to fight against? Mm-hmm. That's why. I, that's what my logic says. Like, because the other ones, it doesn't make that sense. That is to fair. Me. Like, unless they release it or Uraraka next, then it kind of makes sense to me. <laughs> like, in terms of this Bakugo just beating the shit out of, it's like Deku and it's Uraraka. <laughs> but see, the only thing that makes me think that Deku is not going to be free is that this. Say it again, sorry. Zen. Oh no. Alright, we're back after whatever the fuck that was. Zen, why don't you think this Deku was going to be free? Uh, so, the reason I don't think he's going to be free is that he is the Deku from the uh, arc where he starts getting the other quirks. Like, I have a oh. feeling this Deku is probably going to have Black Whip as his ultimate. And I don't yeah. think that they're going to give us the Black Whip Deku for free because this Shinso uh, is the one that he fights when he gets Black Whip and the caption for his unit is the burgeoning powers of the past so it's him getting his other quirks yeah you're um, right there's no way he's free I don't think they're going to give that away yeah no you're right there's probably going to be more units to be released soon ones we won't know of until tomorrow or so or chances are to whenever this comes out um, so we'll see more of them but it's really weird the amount of characters, there's a lot of characters in My Hero, so it probably isn't, it doesn't make sense for you to be able to release a lot of them. But the thing you can do at least do is stop releasing <laughs> so many Dekus in such a weird frame of time. Because again, we are getting basically back-to-back Dekus, which is, not even One Piece gave us back-to-back Luffy's, I don't think. They're usually, they um... usually do the thing of like, when it's a limited, like for example, Law, the next One Piece thing was like, Sabo, but then there were different One Piece characters. It wasn't just like, here's the Luffy that is free that came with um, a Law, and then now that we're over here with Sabo, here's a new pullable version of Luffy. It's not 100% that way. I think Tanjiro did. Oh, you're right. Probably did. <laughs> if anyone was going to do didn't, it, it's didn't Didn't he get, like, uh, Tanjiro and Nezuko, and then the next Demon Slayer unit was Tanjiro and Gyu? Yes, that is correct. I want to say that is correct. I'm not 100% sure on that, but that sounds Neither accurate Neither am I, but that me. sounds right to me. So yeah, we'll just have to wait and see with the My Hero event. And now we'll get into the actual part where we can end it on, because now we get to tell you about what's coming in the roadmap for point four point five anniversary. So these are the events that are going to lead us into the actual anniversary. In April, which is the current month, we have the 4th Anniversary and the My Hero Academia event. At the beginning of May, it's Golden Week and Buso Rankin. Uh, I saw Buso Rankin and I immediately... That's right, it's Buso Rankin. Fuck! Yeah. (laughs) I really like Buso Rankin. You do. You're the only only person I know who likes Buso Rankin. I'm the only person alive that likes Buso Rankin. Yeah. God damn it. And based off of some things that OCHD said, he thinks that maybe... Um, Golden Week might be Dragon Ball because in this entire like breakdown list there is no Dragon Ball anything. So if they were going to do it, it'd probably be Golden Week because that because that also falls on Goku. Yeah, Day, it Gohan seems Day. unlikely that they would not do Dragon. Like it would be, it would be basically yeah. an entire year with no Dragon Ball. Then right, that's crazy. Yeah, it's, one it's, of the most, it's wild. That would be wild. There's no way they're going to go all year with no Dragon Ball. It's not going to no. happen. No way. <laughs> and that's just not us being huge Dragon Ball fans. They will have fucked up if they have not released a single Dragon Ball unit in an entire year. Yeah, well, why would you even make this transforming mechanic if and not then not 
put in a Dragon Ball unit for the whole year that's out. Like, come exactly. on. Exactly. Unless you're going to do it for anniversary. Think your shit through. But yeah. Think your shit through, please. I'm, I'm definitely... There will be a Dragon Ball somewhere. Uh, June, the Hitman Reborn and the Prince of Tennis, which is basically like me going, yeah, Hitborn... Uh, Hitman Damn it, Reborn. I fucking like the Prince of Tennis, yep. too. Oh. You going, yay, Prince of Tennis. Someone brought up to me that there might be a chance of it being uh, Suna and Rebor- Reborn as a limited, and I was like, oh, fuck. I actually would really like them together <laughs> as one. I would really Didn't like... they reveal that they're doing Kuroko soon, too? Uh... I don't think so. They did reveal two other series, which were, um, fuck, I have to find the name of it again. Uh, but we'll, actually, I can get to that right now. What's stopping me? Let me look at them right now. One of them is definitely Stone Ocean, part six. Um, and the other one is, it has like a really long name. It is Magical Patissier Kosaka-chan. Which is from the which is the Nisekoi spinoff written and drawn by the We Never Learn uh, mangaka, which this is also our first Jump Plus series. This one right here, the first one. There's been zero Jump Plus series until this one, so that's at least a kind of a big deal in my eyes because that means that maybe that will open the door for us to eventually getting stuff like uh, Spy X Family down the line at some point, but. Yeah, I don't think they said... Oh, yeah, you're right. That's right. OCHD said that at during Christmas, right? There might be a Kuroko yeah, so. um, basketball thing. He also said Cascade, the horse, from... Yes! <laughs> I forget the name of his manga, but I'm, I'm just going to say fuck it and say from Ore Collection, Cascade, the horse. <laughs> fuck his original series, because at this point, most people who like Cascade really liked it from Ore Collection. <laughs> But yeah, you're right. Yeah, that was just good. the one guy who's like, yes. Yeah, but I think it was for the sports festival thing, whatever, that they were going to release a Kuroko basketball thing. I'd have to look back so far up to see it. I forgot where they mentioned it, but they definitely did say that was coming. Uh, I have to look back over so many messages just to see. It's fine. But yeah, at some point they are going to release that, so remember. OCHD, if you made it this far, please comment down below saying when. Maybe I'll just... <laughs> you made it this far. Maybe please I'll tell leave... us. I'll leave a comment down below saying, OCHD, please answer, when is Kuroko basketball coming? <laughs> we don't remember. Um, Next. and this I is swear coming. to God he said that it was soon, like with the Prince of Tennis, I think he said. Oh, that might make sense, because that is during the sports festival. That might be summer, so that might yeah. be July. Yeah. Uh, and that's also, summer is also summer and One Piece. Hell yeah. More God One damn it! Goodness. Maybe they'll Actually, find. That's okay. I can skip that. Finally, I'm desperate for something to skip. Uh, so I really hope. I'm basically praying that it's they finally release my girl from Taiwan and give us the the carrot, the one with the cool transforming one. Oh yeah, the like Super Saiyan carrot. Yeah, that one. I want that one. So I'm so angry. She's locked away in Taiwan. <laughs> give me my girl. <laughs> Out of all the One Piece characters to fucking lock away, it's that one. <laughs> Sue Long version. August, we have the mysteriously titled 1010 in Black Clover. 1010 currently being theorized to be not Jujutsu Kaisen, it's the prequel, right? Jujutsu Kaisen Zero? Well, any of it's fine, but uh, 1010 is just Juju in Japanese. Mm. So if it's not them. And if it's another Demon Slayer character, because that's something I've noticed. This <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed this. I'll uninstall. This... I'll uninstall right away. If that shit comes around, and not only is it not Jujutsu Kaisen, but it's like Tanjiro and Zenitsu limited duo unit, I'm uninstalling. I'm going to say right now, we don't have any Demon Slayer on this list, and you know for a fact they are fucking <laughs> lying. So unless we're well, okay, getting... but we've already had Demon Slayer this year. Multiple times. Bro, they released them every two months. You're going to tell me yeah. they're not going to? <laughs> yeah, we're not going. <laughs> we're not going eight months without another Demon Slayer unit. There's not a no. fucking chance. So either it's literally Golden Week is Demon Slayer again, or it's Summer. That's your. Those are your two chances. If if by then there is Demon no Demon Slayer Demon and Slayer. Dragon Ball together. Yeah. So if neither one of them are in there, I would start sweating profusely <laughs> for your 10-10, for your because at that point it could be put into anything. But I really do hope it is Jujutsu Kaisen in some way. They need to just do a large batch and release all a bunch of them at once. 
<laughs> yeah, they needed. Well, apparently, when Demon Slayer came out at first, that's what they did. They released like a shitload of Demon Slayer stuff. Yeah, they should definitely um, for here. So I'm hoping that's what they do with um, that as well. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. Okay. That? So they did. Uh, they did confirm Kuroko is coming. In the fourth anniversary interview, they said that um, we have an. Ot- we are working to make sure that we can do a better job for female fans of the game. Jumpudi has a high amount of female <laughs> players. Around 25% of the player base is female. I felt it was necessary for us to have a female perspective when making decisions and moving forward with development, which is something I have not considered. They're talking about how nice it is that they hired like a female designer. Yes, good job on them. That's not why I'm laughing. I'm yes. laughing because they specifically are saying we want more female series, and they're talking about Kuroko basketball for something that you badly well, desperately. Wait, want. I haven't finished. I haven't finished reading it yet. Okay. It gets even better. Okay, go. She's helped us make plans in the future so we can do a better job of meeting the expectations for female players. So for this year, we have created the autumnal sports event, which will be uh, the series Haikyuu and Kuroko no Basuke, <laughs> <laughs> because. Sports manga is just for girls, Fuck which it really is. Fuck that, man. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Slam dunk is for men. <laughs> Slam dunk is for... <laughs> You're going to tell me the gorilla dunk is loved by women, and if so, hey, ladies, my name is Wokey, and I can tell you right now, if you're super into <laughs> Slam Dunk, I think we could really have a fun time together. <laughs> That's crazy. That's fucking hilarious that they call it, like, sports manga. It's, like, the exact opposite over here, where it's, like, sports is usually... And that's... Obviously, there's, there's like, stuff like women's sports, obviously. But it's usually seen as male-focused, and women have to fight for their rights to kind of get on that same play. They had to fight for their rights to get on the same play field, kind of. And then you have Japan, where it's like, this is obviously for women, right? Who gives... <laughs> these fucking mangas featuring these pretty boys is all for them. There's no men punching. There's no destruction of the world. <laughs> That's great. I'm gl- I love that they're coming. I love that the reason they're showing up is because they've decided to add more women. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, because they wanna they wanna please the ladies, so they gotta put in uh, sports manga. <laughs> Oh, that's great. But they're not going to put in romance manga because they know the only ones that exist in Jump are super fan servicey heavy. Yeah, <laughs> so but, those leave... are, but that's like Yuna. Those are, that's for the dudes. That's for me. <laughs> no girl reads that. That's for you. Oh my god, that, I never really thought about it. But yeah, kind of in manga space, at least in Shonen Jump wise, the romance, typical romance manga that you would find in Shonen Jump are 100% geared towards boys. So that yep. would mean that they would definitely gravitate more towards uh sports manga suddenly the blue box makes so much more sense to me (laughs) because blue box is both put together yes oh my god that's fucking genius it's great oh man you're learning a lot about cultures here (laughs) that's for sure (laughs) Uh, and then finally for September, we have Gintama and Autumn, and I think that's pretty much an easy save for both of us, because we don't really... I might actually get into some Gintama. I really I like... I want to get in... Gintama is one of those things I feel like a fraud shonen fan for not being into, but, like, I just don't... That's so much, you know? You know what we should do? We should just do a series where weekly we try and get through all of Gintama. We have to set, like... <laughs> we just watch some Gintama together every week. Yeah, Gintama every week, and then we record our immediate thoughts right afterwards. And we do like—I'd be down to do that, to be honest. Yeah, so we would have to. We would have to first make an idea of whether or not we want to watch it together off screen, and then talk about the episodes (laughs) afterwards, or if we want to legitimately get together and watch it both at the same time, and then talk about it afterwards. We'll figure that out, but that would at least be hilarious. If you want to do that Gintama idea, I'm totally down to do it. I would totally do that. All right. Well, if, congratulations to the t- uh, to the ten people who made it this far. Look forward to the Gintama series coming in the future. <laughs> uh, and let's see. And then after September, there's actually more stuff because after September they have um, after Gintama. And speaking of autumn, it's autumn time to move your body. I don't know what that could possibly. Be. Is there a dancing? That's the that's the autumn sports festival. You think so? Okay, then it has to be them then. Then it's campaign four point five so anniversary. Yeah, that's Haikyuu and that's Kuroko. Okay, so that they're they're coming in September. Then after September ends, 
a world trigger, a mystery event, Madoka box, and a mysterious crossover. Hmm. And then outstanding series. It's gonna, be, from... it's gonna be Demon Slayer and One Piece crossover. You think so? That's gonna be the ultimate crossover right there. <laughs> the mysterious ultimate crossover is gonna be the 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 fabled Tanjiro and Luffy. <laughs> nah, man, Tanjiro and uh, Deku. It's gonna it's gonna be a Tanjiro and Luffy, and it's gonna be a Deku and Naruto crossover. <sighs> what it's gonna be finally i actually would like a deku and naruto just because how often they keep getting compared to each other i just think it's weird that there's no naruto ichigo duo unit that is very weird but i feel like at this point most people associate naruto with deku than they do ichigo you, you, you at that point you'd be making it for old people to be like remember when naruto and uh, ichigo were <laughs> standing side by side together remember those old times when here you go and then they still plan to eventually release something from Naruto, the Seven Fokage, and the Scarlet Spring, and Hokenshitsu no Shinigami. I don't know what that is, but... I have no idea what that is. Uh, how much you want to bet it has something to do with a ghost. If she's out of hot springs, I'm in. But let me see. <laughs> Hokenshitsu, what the fuck is this? It's a shonen comedy. So you know it's hilarious. Who is this by... I've never heard of this series. The Infirmary Deaf God. That's a fantastic name. <laughs> it only had 10 chapters? No, it had volumes. 10 volumes. Has there just been something secretly running for this many years? Oh, this is back in like 2010. Okay. That explains why I don't know it. Created by Sho Almiato? Al Al Creator of a hook. Dude, no, no fucking clue. Uh, a mangaka from Okayama show was a former assistant of Akira Amano, creator of the series Hitman Reborn. Okay, sure. It's just a that's pretty cool. All right, sure. Go, go for it. Interesting. So I have yeah. not read Hitman Reborn, but I want to. But I hear it gets really bad, so I'm like, okay, I don't it know. only gets really bad when you hit a specific point, which I like. I've explained to you or tried to explain to you. Um, you have, and I it went completely over my head. It's so fucking hard to explain. It is so unreasonably hard to explain. Like, I'm better able to explain my fucking send the rich people to the moon idea than I am able to explain what the fuck happens in Reborn at some point. Uh, and that there's also, like... Yeah, okay, yeah. I still think Reborn is worth a read. Even with that stuff. Because even if that I wish it was like, on the app. It should be on the app. We should get Shonen Jump on some shit. Because I think also Gintama... Yeah, the Shonen awesome. Jump app is missing like some classics, man. Oh, you know what? If we also do that Gintama idea, we have to also do the cross... Because Gintama did a crossover with uh, Sket Dance. It's okay. A, <laughs> it's a really good episode. <laughs> that that Sket Dance episode had me fucking dying. It was so good. Because okay. apparently the guy who did Sket Dance used to be a assistant to Gintama. That was like one of the things there, so... I know the person who writes Gintama is not called Gintama, but I'm still going to call him Gintama until we find out his name. Mr. Mister Gintama? Yeah, Mr. Gintama. But that's the end of Jumpudi Jams. You may be hearing of other Jumpudi properties coming later. But for now, <laughs> that's basically it. That's uh, We'll come back when we actually know what the Bakugo does, and we'll talk about Bakugo. Um... But for now, man, it's a lot. It, it it's a lot of units. But I'm actually kind of surprised that there was no banner units other than the limiteds. That's really weird to me. Maybe it's also probably com co coming off of Yu Yu Hakusho with the fucking limited banner units. That makes me feel like. Eh, actually, I think it might be better. Actually, it would probably be too much to have to summon for a Musoi and then also summon for banner units that are not limited. It's too much at that point. Like they're generous, but they're not that generous. <laughs> Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. But that's it for Jimpuni Jams, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. You know now I have to make the title the Seven Chaos Deku's and then put like seven de all seven Deku's up on the. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, it, Obama chuckles. You mean the Seven <laughs> Chaos Deku? <laughs> Hyper Deku, <laughs> the <laughs> ultimate form. <laughs> the master, <laughs> the master Deku. Can you please? Please put Deku's face on Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> you know I can. Well, which version of Deku? The, the one that's actually like Shadow the Hedgehog or just super happy? Yes. Alright. 
I'll do that. Till next time, everyone. <laughs> we will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye.